Hello from the Windy City of Chicago. I'm Dr. Jen. And I'm Dr. Jess. And this is Catching Up with Vet Candy. Let's catch up with the latest veterinary news. This program is brought to you by KBROVET. Learn more at kbrovet.com. A team of scientists from primarily the University of Maryland has deciphered the first comprehensive continuous genome for a parasite responsible for transmitting Lyme disease and other serious infections. With their newly described genome for a black-legged tick or deer tick, the researchers identified thousands of novel genes and new protein functions, including proteins associated with tick immunity, disease transmission, and developmental stages. This work provides valuable information for developing interventions for various tick-borne diseases, far surpassing previous efforts to sequence the tick's genome, which resulted in partial genomes or fragments of genome with gaps in uncertainties. Black-legged ticks are closely related species, are widespread throughout North America, Europe, North Africa, and Asia. They are the primary vectors of a number of diseases, including Lyme disease. Yet, many aspects of their biology remain unknown. With a complete genome, scientists can begin to unravel the molecular mechanisms behind many aspects of the parasite's biology and its interactions with both hosts and the disease it transmits. A black-legged tick's genome is made up of more than two billion discrete pieces of DNA code. The researchers used a technique called high C <laughs> to bridge small pieces of DNA into longer contiguous threads. The result is a high quality contiguous genome that is 98% complete. The new genome revealed that 40% of the annotations previously described for the black-legged tick relied on older technology and needed updating. Next, the researchers compare their complete genome to snippets of the genomes sequenced from 51 wild-caught ticks, showing that the new work would be used as a reference for identifying segments of genetic material from other individuals. This also identified unrecognized genetic diversity among groups of ticks with different regions in the U.S. Finally, the team analyzed their tick genome to identify thousands of new genes and proteins and describe new critical functions of those genes. For example, in one experiment, they found proteins were only present during certain phases of a tick's life cycle or at a specific stages during a tick's blood meal and digestion. By knocking out a gene that tells tick cells to make one of those proteins, they were able to disrupt the tick's feeding and digestion process. Future work like this could help target gene-based therapies that interrupt some part of the disease transmission cycle between ticks and hosts. And now, something fun. Hello, I'm Dr. Jemiah Tracy, a board-certified veterinary neurologist, and today, I want to tell you three key insights about KBROVET CA1. In the dynamic field of veterinary medicine, staying informed about innovative treatments is paramount. KBROVET CA1 is a promising solution for managing seizures in dogs with idiopathic epilepsy. Here are three essential aspects every veterinarian should know about this conditionally approved medication. KBROVET CA1's efficacy lies in its scientific foundation. Potassium bromide, the primary component, traverses nerve channels, creating a negative charge. This negative charge plays a pivotal role in reducing the likelihood of a seizure signal being transmitted to the next nerve. Understanding this mechanism is crucial for veterinarians, providing insights into how KBROVET CA1 delivers targeted and comprehensive seizure control. 
Bromine shows excellent gastrointestinal absorption with peak levels around 1.5 hours post-administration. It undergoes no hepatic metabolism, making it suitable for dogs with liver disease. The CSF to serum bromide ratio remains consistent after 45 days. Renal dysfunction reduces bromide excretion, requiring a dose reduction to prevent bromide toxicosis. Routine renal function monitoring is recommended for dogs on potassium bromide. Biochemical assays may incorrectly read bromide as chloride, causing a false hyperchloremia on panels. The reported half-life of potassium bromide varies from 15 to 46 days. Half-life is influenced by administration method, dietary factors, and assay use. The half-life of Cabrovet CA1 has been shown to be 21 days. The prolonged half-life offers scheduling flexibility but poses challenges during medication discontinuation. Dose tapering is advised due to the extended clearance time. One common hurdle in veterinary care is ensuring treatment compliance, particularly with daily medications. Cabrovet CA1 addresses this challenge with a practical administration method. Administered once daily in a palatable, chewable French vanilla flavor tablet, Cabrovet simplifies the treatment regimen. Another way Cabrovet CA1 enhances compliance is that if a dose is missed, drug concentration fluctuation is unlikely to occur because of the 21-day half-life, which minimizes the risk of a seizure and also gives the pet owner peace of mind. Veterinarians should be aware that Cabrovet CA1 has received conditional approval from the FDA. Conditional approval means that the product has been demonstrated safe and there is a reasonable expectation of effectiveness. Veterinarians should refer to the prescribing information for a comprehensive understanding of adverse events, warnings, and precautions. Veterinarians play a pivotal role in guiding pet owners through the administration process and ensuring the safety of their patients. By understanding the medication's mechanism of action, promoting treatment compliance, and considering safety aspects, veterinarians can seamlessly integrate Cabrovet CA1 into their practices, providing optimal care for dogs with idiopathic epilepsy. So that does it for today's insights on Cabrovet CA1. Thanks for watching. And that's it for the show. Thank you for watching Catching Up with Vet Candy. If you want to stay up to date with everything vet med, then follow us at My Vet Candy.